morning and welcome to Radio Friends on Wednesday, November the 15th. We have a new guest on Radio Friends, but an old friend of mine. He appeared with us so many times on the old Pepper and Friends television show, Howard Marshall. Good to have you here, Thank Howard. Thank you, Paul. It's great and, to be here. And Howard Marshall is an a old-time fiddler. I yeah. mean, you do you do fiddling like well, Taylor McBain. Yeah. What what classifies an old-time fiddler? Well, I guess primarily I'm an ear musician. Number one, I learned my music, a lot of it, from older players like Taylor McBain here in Columbia. Uh, but then most important probably is that my natural performance venue would be playing for square dancers mm -hmm. and people to waltz. It wouldn't be up on a stage in a concert setting. Right. And, I, and we play fiddle tunes that are inherited, you know, from previous generations that people dance to all the way back to Scotland and Ireland and Germany, you know, two, 300 years ago. Is old time fiddling, is it a dying art now? That's a great question and we get that question a lot, but no it isn't. It su might be surprising to people to know that really there are more young people uh, in their early teens playing fiddle now and more girls at that age really playing old-time fiddle music than ever in my life and I'm, I'm 73 and you're about three years younger than me or so but you know then in my lifetime and I think that may partly be because of the influence of older fiddlers like Taylor McBain who taught so many young people and it kind of trickled down to other generations. Now you've written a couple of books, your yeah. first one, and, and they're both available, right? Yes, sir. University of Missouri Press. Let me hold that book yeah. up. Uh, so you've written a couple of books. The first one is called Play Me Something Quick and Devilish, Old Time Fiddlers in Missouri. Yeah. And you're dealing with all the old time fiddlers here? Well, it's trying to get as many in as possible in 450 pages. You yeah, know, but, uh, now Taylor, we, we keep mentioning Taylor McBain. Now you have a picture of here. Yeah, if I can find Taylor that McBain quicker. was a, one of my favorite old time fiddlers and just a really nice, nice guy. He played a lot with Kathy Barton and, and Dave Parra. He played a lot well, with you. There's you Kathy here? and Dave's album where they're pretending to be characters in a Bingham painting yeah. on the Missouri River, and there's Taylor McBain in there with his fiddle pretending to be a voyageur in 1804 or so. so Ballad, uh, the Ballad of Boonslick. Now this is in the first book. Yeah, this is the you, first this book. Is in your first book. Now the second book that you've written yes. is called Fiddler's Dream, yes, right? Yes, sir, yeah. And what, uh, what is special about this particular book? Well, I conceive them in terms of chronology, and that would mean talking about settlement history, what people came into the Missouri Territory and developed the traditions that we have now in fiddle and dance music. So the first book, Play Me Something Quick and, and Devly, starts out with the earliest French settlements. You know, the oldest music we know that's square dance music is in among the French people south of St. Louis. Yeah. So that's the 1700s. So it goes on through the 1800s and stops in about 1920. So in terms of its discussion of historic themes and ethnic groups and people who brought music and the new book picks the story up in the jazz age in the 1920s. You know, I'm impressed, Howard, because I mean, these are not little little books. These are pretty <laughs> thick books. You had to do a lot of research. What The second one has 427 pages. <laughs> this is a big book. And, How a, long and did, a bargain. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. How long did it take you to write this book? Well, I started seriously when I, when I put the last pencil point on the 2012 book. So I probably started in 2012 seriously, and it took you know, several years to get it to the publisher. But you could say that I've been thinking about these books since the 1960s when I first became interested in playing the fiddle having met people like Taylor yeah. McBain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> now I, 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 I was hoping that you would bring your fiddle along today and you'd give us a little bit of old time fiddling. But we found, uh, Travis found uh, some video with you and the old time fiddle, playing the old time fiddle with piano background yes, music, yeah, right? Yeah. And Travis, if you'll run about old oh, 10, 15 seconds of that and uh, take a look. You, where was this done? Well, this is in a coffee shop in Weezer, Idaho, uh, a dull moment during the national old-time fiddlers contest that they have each June. And uh, this is a friend of mine, Musial Wolf from Boonville, a marvelous old-time piano player. And in the afternoons in, you know, 
my break times, we would go to this coffee shop and just play fiddle tunes for people, and others would come and just join in and just have jam sessions. Oh, that's nice. So, so this was done during the fiddly, a break in the old time fiddling contest. Yeah, yeah. A week long event every June in Idaho. <laughs> and how many people? How many people show up for that? Oh, ten or fifteen thousand. You're kidding. No, oh, and that, that swamps the town, believe me. 10 or 15,000 people. Campgrounds, yeah, it's huge. What would you say is the <laughs> biggest misconception that people have about this kind of music, that kind of music, who are, if they're not familiar with it? Well, I think the, the most uh, nettlesome misconception to me personally is that people always assume that if you're an old-time fiddler, you have no education, you know, you, you're you know, illiterate and can't read music and don't know anything, don't read, you know, the sort of the, the hillbilly image. You uh -huh. know? And yes, there are plenty of people that like that, that play the fiddle, but just as many people are like me, you know. I, I was, I'm a retired MU professor and uh, I just love the music, you know. So I think the misconception is still with us and when you see talk about fiddling, you know, uh, mm -hmm. people automatically think of sort of the hillbilly stereotype. And I guess we'll always have that stereotype with us. But, yeah, but isn't the <laughs> fiddle the same as the violin? Exactly, exactly the, the, the fiddle same. is the violin, yes. it's just the way it is played. Precisely. So you're, <laughs> they're, they're playing old time, they're playing fiddles in the symphony orchestras. They they're are. They're just playing a, a different tune. They are. There are some ways they're different in the kind of strings that you like to use and the way you have your bridge shape. Yeah. A few things like that, but the instruments themselves are the same. And an old time fiddler is just as likely to have a $10,000 violin as someone in the, the school orchestra. Okay, so if people want to read all about old time fiddling music, uh, make good holiday gifts, right? Outstanding. You got two books and they're available where? Well, the University of Missouri Press publishes the book, so the easiest way is to go to their website. Just type in University of Missouri Press or go to Google and type in Fiddler's Dream, Howard Marshall, and you'll come up with several websites. Okay, are they available on Amazon? Yes, Amazon also can. So on Amazon.com or the uh, Missouri uh, Bookstore also? Uh, don't think it is currently available at the bookstore. I've been working on that. Okay, you got to get it in there. <laughs> I'm too. trying. Maybe you need to go do a little fiddling down at the Missouri Bookstore. <laughs> Howard Marshall, thank you. And you have a website people can go to? Uh, no, I don't. Just get me through the University of Missouri Press website. Okay, University of Missouri Press website. Howard yes. Marshall, thank you so much for thank coming you, Paul. back. It's good. Next Pleasure. time you come back, bring that fiddle with you. I will, All right. for sure. We're out of time for today. Tomorrow, the Piano Showcase in Agriculture Park. Bye-bye.